Hello everyone, welcome to Bebop Mondays episode 13. And in today's episode we're gonna take a look at some really swinging licks, phrases by tenor saxophone player Hank Mobley on the jazz standard There Will Never Be Another You. So this morning I described the complete solo and I extracted some phrases that I thought would be nice to discuss and to show you how to play the monkey guitar. Of course, look, go listen. Of course, go listen to the original and notice the incredible swing that Hank Mobley has. And the reason for that swing is the consistency of his swing eighth notes. And I talked about that many times before, but it is especially apparent when you listen closely to Hank Mobley's playing. So that's what we're going for today. When we're going to play these phrases, we're going to pay extra attention to the timing and the swing of the eighth notes. To address a concern I hear often, but I heard it recently again, that people find it difficult to recall all these phrases, all these licks that I'm showing you. But that's not the point of these videos. The point is not for you to be able to recall all the licks during a solo. The point is to study the, the licks, to do the best you can, to pay attention to technique, to timing, and then when you improvise, maybe you will recall them, maybe not, but that's not the point. The point is that you were working on your jazz chops in general, especially, of course, timing and technique, and maybe some of the language will stick. But it is always a good exercise to study licks, phrases, and concepts by the masters, and one of those masters is no doubt Hank Mobley. So, the first phrase I have for you is this phrase for E flat major seven or E flat six. I always write down six because I play usually play six chords, but of course you can play major seven if you want to. One, two, three. One, two, three. So this is a, a quote from, I think another song. I can't recall the song now, but this is something that Hank Mobley plays often. It's one of his signature licks, you could say, and this is a variation of uh, the normal phrase, which is exactly the same notes, but the rhythm would be, instead of playing this, you play the C in the second bar and the A flat in the third bar, they become quarter notes. Instead of... So, but that, that's your choice, you can phrase that however you want. So let me play that on the backing track. There is a backing track for this song on my channel. There's a link to the backing track in the description. So we can play this in the first two bars. We can play that in the first two bars of the second half. I think that's it. That's basically it. phrase that you can easily use in other songs and the way to find it is you have E flat try it there so it's right there right in C would be uh, here I see this e C chord next lick the next lick is for the 251 to C minor now there's an interesting thing happening the chords are D half diminished G7 to C minor. But Hang Mobley is just playing D minor 7 in his solo because he's playing 
with this A instead of now this is something that you will see a lot in bebop players. Someone once told me that he thought they did that because they had so many licks for normal 2-5-1s that it would be a shame not be able to use them when there was a 2-5-1 in minor. Which could very well be the case because Charlie Parker often also just plays a regular 2 chord, like a 2 chord for a major 2-5-1, in a 2-5-1 to minor. And you, you can say, well, that's really wrong to play this A on top of the D half diminished. And if you play a D half diminished and then just play yeah, that would be wrong. But you have to look at the complete line and notice that the A actually resolves to an A flat on the G7. Right, so it's not like there is extra emphasis on the A. It's just part of this phrase and it's probably a regular 2-5-1 in C major that he often played. Right, and now he just resolves this phrase to minor. Let me play it once in time. And let's put extra emphasis on the swing eighth notes, like the consistency of it. Do, 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 do. Three, four, one. Three, four, one. It's pretty hard to play consistent swing eighth notes, especially on the guitar, especially when you have a picking technique like mine, which is based on gypsy jazz picking, or it is gypsy jazz picking, where you have lots of sweeps. It doesn't matter if you do sweeping or alternate or double downstroke, you still have to maintain the T, D, D, D. So if I do, I, do, I shouldn't play, it should be almost as if I'm alternating. Sweep again. Also notice that I'm doing a downstroke on the high C. For extra emphasis, which gives me a double down, right? The A and the C both have a downstroke. So let me play this on uh, the 251 to C minor. Now we can also play it on the 251 to A flat major, right? We just have to resolve to a major tonality. So I see it as this, right? This is D minor. So if I play B flat minor, which would be here, the lick would be here. Now resolve to major. And of course, you can also play it then to E flat. So then F minor would be here. Let's go to the next one. This is a phrase based on that principle when you have a minor chord that you can shift the root of it down. So you have B flat minor and you have the B flat on the bottom. And you just all the way until the G and then you have E flat seven there. So that principle you can use in comping, but you can also use it in your solo. And that's what Hank Mobley is doing here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So the nice thing is that we can find it very easily by just playing a B flat minor bar chord, right? But then I play it like this without, uh, the, without the root. And you start the lick like that before the beat one. One, two, three, four. And I like to keep the notes down to keep them ringing, which is something, of course, you can do on the saxophone, but it is a nice thing to do on guitar. If you don't like that, you can lift your fingers. So this is for 2-5-1 to A flat. 
Of course, you can play it in E flat by playing it here on the first position because F minor is here. But then we have some open strings. One, two, three, four. Or we could play it, of course, high. One, two, three, four. Let's try that on the backing track. Here we have a longer phrase, it's two systems actually, and it, again it's a 2 5 one to A-flat, but then it continues to the D-flat 7 and the E-flat, so it's, the chords go like B-flat minor, E-flat 7, A-flat, D-flat 7, or A-flat minor 6, that's the same, back to E-flat. Right, so 2, 5, 1 in A-flat, and then a flat 7th in E-flat, in E-flat, it's also called a backdoor dominant. I talk more about that in my theory lesson. I will link that in the description. It's a long video, but then I talk about all the theory you ever have to know as a jazz musician. So check it out. He just plays very nice continuing ideas, really typical bebop phrases. So let's play that. One, two, three, four, one. <laughs> One, two, three, four, one. Of course, we could play that to E flat two. We just have to put our pinky on the root of the two chords, so F minor, and then the lick is right here. Three, four, one. But then we cannot play the rest of the lick, we have to stop there. So it just becomes a regular 2 5 one then we resolve to E-flat major. And here we have a phrase for the last eight bars, which is uh, usually considered to be quite tricky. There's different ways to play the chords. So the way I usually play it is like this. So we have 2 5 one to A flat, A flat minor, and then A half to minus D7. And I do G minor, D7, G minor, C7, F minor, D flat 7, E. But in Gypsy Jazz, for example, they usually do this. E flat, D flat, D flat 7, C7, so descending dominant chords. I think they're doing E flat, A flat 7, G minor, C7. But it's basically all the same thing, because if you play G minor or E flat, it's all one, right? Because three is the same as one. I talk about that in the theory lesson two. And then we get a two five to the two chord. It might be a good idea to just practice some lines there so that you don't get stuck at the end of the solo. And here are some really good suggestions for lines. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. 
I see now that the tab is not correct, it's on the wrong string. So I will, I will change that because you can download these tabs on my Patreon. So I will fix that and then if you want to have a copy of the tab, check out my Patreon. There's a link in the description where you can download all the tabs for every video I ever made, depending on the level that you join. But if you join the lowest level, which is $5, you can still download this one. So it should be on lower strings or higher on the guitar neck. One, two, three. The nice thing is it actually doesn't resolve to E flat. It stops on the B flat seven, which is quite unusual. Um, so this phrase starts on the A half diminished and then we get two, five, but there he stops the line. He doesn't play on the one chord, which is something that you rarely see, but it really works. So I did resolve to E flat now. I paid extra. It's very hard for me to not resolve to E flat, but that's maybe worth practicing because it's a kind of a novel idea not to resolve to the one chord, but stop on the five. And I have another phrase for the same part, the last eight bars, but now without the A half diminished D seven. And this one does resolve, although on the four end of the bar before. And it sounds like this. One, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, one. So again, these are all eighth notes, so we gotta make sure that it keeps swinging, that we keep the eighth note swing consistent, which means that every long note of a group of two eighth notes is as long as every other long note and every short note is as short as every other short note, right? Da, dee, 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 dee. Even if we slide, gotta keep that swing rhythm alive. six very cool Hank Mobley phrases. I hope you will have fun with it and don't forget to focus on the swing and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!